our forefathers made very clear that our democracy would only survive if there were individuals who were willing to give something back to this country, to be able to dedicate themselves to what this democracy and our freedom are all about. And the fact that there are young men and women who are willing to make that kind of sacrifice, to give something back to this country, is what makes America strong. God bless you and God bless the Marines. Since our first call to duty 237 years ago, Marines have established a reputation as bold innovators and elite warriors, anchored by our sense of honor and love of country. The service of Marines during conflict, peace, and uncertainty has demonstrated an ageless ethos of fidelity and courage that has established who we are. The State Department confirmed the U.S. diplomatic mission in Benghazi, Libya was under attack. An ambassador to that country was murdered last night along with three other Americans. The city Americans. of Benghazi, the second attack on overseas A U.S. Marine facility. rapid response team sent to Libya. A Marine team is now making its way to Sudan to deal with the aftermath. The Marine rapid response team is in Yemen's capital following the violent attack. On the Our nation has come to understand that when a crisis occurs or security is threatened, Marines respond quickly and unfailingly. We accomplish the mission, not most of the time, but every time. This is who we are. This is our legacy. Responding to crisis with the same tenacity of today's United States Marines, the leathernecks of our greatest generation answered the clarion call 70 years ago. Exactly eight months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, more than 19,000 Marines and sailors landed on the Japanese-held southern Solomon Islands. The ensuing battle for Guadalcanal would begin a hard-fought and epic six-month campaign that would mark a turning point in the Second World War. Guadalcanal was probably one of the most uh, important battles to really occur during World War II. It was the very first uh, ground offensive that was going to be conducted against the Imperial Empire of Japan. The most important thing about Guadalcanal was is it, it really did turn back the tide. Naval parity against the Japanese had been achieved at the pivotal battles of Coral Sea and at Midway. At the time the battle for Guadalcanal and Tulagi began, Japanese forces in the Pacific remained strong, capable, and confident of victory. At the same time, U.S. forces were still in a vulnerable state, having suffered tremendous casualties in the eight months since Pearl Harbor. In the late summer of 1942, upon learning Japanese forces were building an airfield in the Southern Solomons, the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff made the decision to seize the key islands of Guadalcanal and Tulagi. Although newly arrived in the Pacific, the 1st Marine Division, under the command of Major General Alexander Vandegrift, was selected to make the critical landings. Henderson Field was essential. It was a an unsinkable flat top. Without it, we had no air defense at all. During one week in late August and early September alone, some 5,000 Imperial troops landed and were thrown against the Marines' defensive perimeter. The constant attacks tested resolve, but the line was held. Marines endured not only relentless attacks from the Japanese, but also malaria, dysentery, short supplies, and the harsh tropical climate of the South Pacific. And then the natives came in and told us that a couple thousand Japanese had landed at Tassimboko. Edson asked permission to go and we destroyed Kawaguchi, destroyed his rear echelon, we captured his heavy weapons, and we captured all of his food stuff. We were ordered back to an amphibious area where Vandegrift had his headquarters. Edson wanted to stay and uh, tackle the, the tail end of Kawaguchi's brigade that was headed up toward Henderson Field. Here at Alligator Creek, at Bloody Ridge, the Matanikau River, and in the skies over Guadalcanal, combat legends like Lou Diamond, Merritt Red Mike Edson, John Bassalone, Mitchell Page, and Harold Bauer demonstrated the grit and tenacity for which Leathernecks are known. The Marines taught us to be men, really. We were young boys. They taught us to be men and to work with each other, to accept the hardships with each other, 
and also any glory that there might be or anything like that, it was a tremendous help. The total cost to the Guadalcanal campaign was high. On the ground, almost 1,600 officers and men were killed. 1,152 of them were United States Marines. The wounded numbered almost 5,000. The Japanese, in turn, lost close to 25,000 men on Guadalcanal to combat, illness, wounds, and starvation. As significant as the physical destruction of Japanese forces by a combined arms team was, the Guadalcanal campaign was also a psychological victory for the American public. On a level playing field, the best forces of the Japanese Empire had been defeated. As we pay homage to that victory of 70 years ago, we reflect on the personal courage and sacrifice of those who fought on Guadalcanal. Now memorialized with humble headstones and name inscriptions like these here at the American Cemetery in the Philippines, we honor and remember those who gave so much. Guadalcanal was their last offensive action. After Guadalcanal, the Japanese were on the defensive throughout the Pacific. Following the repulse of the Japanese counterattack early in the battle, General Vandegrift described his young Marines by saying, these youngsters are the darndest people you ever saw when they get started. With the same spirit as the Marines of World War II, who fought for honor and for country, today's Marines, nearly all who joined since 9-11, continue to follow the colors in the harm's way, knowing full well what the hardships they will endure. And we started taking machine gun fire from multiple positions. Our heavy guns, or 50 cals of Mark 19, started engaging. I was posted up into rear security, and as I was doing so, I heard uh, some arguing going around a tall wall. I popped that corner. I shot two bursts, about 15 rounds apiece. I went by, right behind the corner to reload, and I saw a uh, machine gun barrel come around the corner. So I grabbed it, uh, I punched the guy, threw him up against the wall. The combat valor, confident professionalism, and selfless commitment of today's Marines stand with any in our history. All of us in the Marine Corps family realize our role as America's premier crisis response force. We remain the first to fight. We will continue to be faithful to our nation and to one another and never take for granted the blessed liberty our country has given us. My service, I feel, is dedicated to those young Marines, the ones that are really putting their lives out there on the line. The 17, 18, 20-year-old that raises his right hand and says, I'll volunteer for my country. And it's all about protecting people who need protection. And when you need support, you call the Marines, and the Marines go in and they do a phenomenal, phenomenal job. He's chosen to become a, a United States Marine and to, to be, you know, to choose a selfless career of, of service and sacrifice. I'm humbled by, you know, by that choice that he's made. We serve, we all sacrifice. We have the eagle, globe, and anchor tattooed on our soul. In the last 10 years of war, nearly 14,000 Marines have given more. And despite their wounds, they're not done giving. They're not done living, they're thriving. I truly believe I do more now than I did before I was injured. Uh, so minus two legs, I am a wounded warrior who is going to Georgetown and snowboards. And you know, those kind of things uh, are, um, they're not quantifiable. They're, they're just absolutely uh, remarkable. And it's not because of me, it's because of the, the wounded warrior support. Like all Marines, our wounded warriors live life to the fullest. Participating in sports, they regain their self-confidence and remember again the value of being on a team. They also continue to give back. Some return to their active units while others succeed in business and even more return to school. Regardless of hardships resulting from their wounds, these warriors demonstrate some of the purest qualities of Marine selflessness. I believe every Marine from boot camp gets taught that you don't represent yourself anymore. You represent your, your uh, country, you represent the Marine Corps, and you represent, uh, most importantly, the ideals that the Marine Corps uh, puts first. Just remember that there, there's no limitations to what you can do. Uh, those guys at, at Walter Reed are, are proving that every day. For the, for the rest of the Marine Corps, just remember that those, are, those guys are, are still your brothers and they're, they're out there still fighting the fight every day. As we celebrate this year's birthday, 
take time to reflect on all our Corps has accomplished. Remember those who fought on Guadalcanal, honor the sacrifice of our many brothers and sisters, and remember those that have gone before. Continue to do great deeds and endure. I'm proud to protect my country and to serve in the footsteps of those men and women who have served before me. I'm forever grateful for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice and for those men and women who still continue to sacrifice. Our Corps will continue to be defined by our ability to successfully respond to the world's most challenging and chaotic situations. For honor and for country, we'll maintain our world-class standards of discipline, always remembering who we are. Take pride in all that you've accomplished and know that Sergeant Major Barrett and I appreciate your enduring fidelity, your hard work, and your sacrifice. Happy birthday, Marines, and Semper Fidelis.